our first keynote. Um, Maria Marias Hansen um, is chairman of Wastefront. Uh, Maria has some 30 years experience in oil and gas and infrastructure from DEP, NG, Arca, Stats Oil, etc., etc. Uh, but also, most importantly, her Swedish connection is that she's also uh, a board member of Alpha Laval. Uh, I hope Wastefront excuses that. Um, she will address one of the most exciting parts of sustainability, really, uh, recycling, and one particular angle of it, and a very UK-based one as such. Maria, please, the stage is yours. Uh, I hope I have the sound here. Yes, I do believe I have. So, um, you know, uh, it's, it's great being here. I, I flew over from Oslo, Norway, this morning. Um, I haven't been here for one and a half years, um, so it's super exciting. Uh, of course, a lot of what has been going on and presented and discussed uh, during this conference is very related to what I am doing. Uh, I have spent 30 years in the oil and gas industry, uh, basically as a result of Norway's oil and gas history, and I am now living the energy transition. And part of what I'm doing is uh, heading the board of Wastefront. And Wastefront is in the circular economy, and we are trying to address a circular problem uh, and offer a solution. I would say a solution is not the only solution, but we think we can contribute. Uh, so just a quick disclaimer, because we are actually talking to investors these days, uh, so it's always good to, to include that. Uh, when we talk about uh, electrification and transportation, uh, coming from Norway offers an enormous amount of credibility. Um, so Norway is probably um, the country on earth where electrical vehicle has made the most successful penetration, and by now more than 50% of all new cars being sold in Norway uh, are electrical. And it's actually a result of the fabulous grid system that we have in Norway. So it's interesting to see why and how these markets actually develop. So, so we all know about EVs, uh, and uh, you know that's really part of the solution. But one thing has not changed, and that is the tires. The tires are still oil-based, they are not recycled, and they are quite often and to an extent that you probably wouldn't even imagine, um, completely irresponsibly display, uh, disposed of. And we also have to remember that you know traditional tires are used on EVs, and EVs consume more tires than the traditional car because they are heavier and the torch are stronger. So we, right now, we are basically increasing this as a pollution problem globally. And what we want to do as Wastefront is to offer a solution uh, to this waste handling problem. We want to use rubber waste and turn it into useful products that can go into a circular economy in a sustainable way. Um, so um, this is what we are currently doing. We are developing an industrial design uh, based on proven technology, and we have some proprietary process knowledge. But the, the truth here is that we are basically trying to create a new value chain and new products that will be part of the solution while we gradually turn towards a more sustainable future. A, a few numbers, just coming back to, to the actual size of this problem. So 1.6 billion tires are produced worldwide each year. And almost 30 million metric tons it en becomes end-of-life tires. That means that they can non no longer be used as uh, tires for, um, for vehicles. 
Um, and just to sort of give you a sense of the size of this, so in the UK alone, uh, 55 million tires reach end of life status every year. 55 million tires. And if you assume that a tire is about one meter around, you would come one and a half times around equator if you sort of stack them all together. That's just the UK market alone. And in the UK, you have a system, or at least you, you sort of collect tires. In Norway, we have a, a real sort of system for collecting tires. But basically what we do is that we send them to countries that either fill them up in landfill or burn them for some reason or another. Uh, tires are not naturally decomposed. Somehow they will be destroyed, but that's probably more mechanically than uh, biologically. And 41% uh, of global tires are actually not recovered at all. So the systems that we have in Europe, Western Europe and so forth, are not a global system. And if we can reuse these tires and turn them into useful waste instead of burning them, we would actually reduce the CO2 footprint of that process by 80%. And I'll come back to that number afterwards. But, you know, so that's the impact, because if you need to get rid of a landfill, or if you find a meaningful way of using tire, you would burn them maybe to heat a cement oven or something like that. So what we are doing, and then our process, that's collecting waste tires, uh, uh, processing them uh, through a pyrolysis and chemical catalyst process, producing first two products, which is really residual fuel oil, which is called a pyrolysis oil, and a product called carbon black. And then, of course, we can refine these products so that they become useful products. And uh, even a bit more technically, so basically you take tires, you shred them, you take out the steel, you run it through pyrolysis generators, which are, uh, pyrolysis is a pro decomposition uh, process under enormous heat, but with no addition of oxygen, so it doesn't produce CO2. Uh, then uh, you get the char, which you turn into a recycled carbon black, and carbon black is used in tires. And you can to take the liquid products and distillate them and make nafta or fuels, and, and the products that we have over here, uh, like a bunker oil, that would be a renewable bunker oil. So that could be a marine uh, fuel, of course, not necessarily the end product, but a solution until we have a different, uh, transport, uh, a different fuel for the marine sector. And we are going to build our first plant in Sunderland. So we call it the Sunderland plant. You can see here we have a, a, a site on, in the port of Sunderland. Uh, our Sunderland plant that we hope um, to start, start constructing next year is currently being uh, promoted uh, by um, the Department of International Trade as a sustainable project in the UK. And of course there is a great attraction to produce this in the UK, but primarily we have chosen the UK because the end of life tire market is enormous. Uh, so here's the timeline. Um, yeah, okay, a few numbers around capacity or a few numbers around the actual site. So we will um, uh, uh, consume or uh, recycle then 73,000 tons of end-of-life tires per year. And, uh, and if we assume that our process 
uh, then makes a reduction of 80% of the CO2 footprint compared to uh, using tires for as the fuel. Uh, we would reduce uh, CO2 emissions by 1.8 million tons of CO2 over the life of this uh, plant, assumed a 30 life. Uh, uh, 30 years uh, lifespan. Um, the, the CAPEX of this plant is in the order of 100 million uh, pounds, a bit more than 100 million tons, um, pounds. And as, as you can see here, right now we are selecting EPC contractors, we are getting our planning permit, and we are de risking the project so that we can invite new investors to come and join us on this journey. And hopefully we will be in commercial uh, operations uh, by first quarter 2024. So that was actually what I was planning to say, and I almost managed to make it in 10 minutes then. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, any questions?